Well, welcome everyone to the Community Preservation Committee meeting, March 4th, 2024. Welcome to everyone. We have a quorum of our committee and, and also guest people, and we have our wonderful staff person, Kayla. Um, first thing on the agenda is to vote on the February 12th, 24 mini meeting minutes, which Kayla, thank you for doing those up. Do we have any comments on the, um, well, I guess somebody wants to make a motion to accept the minutes. Risa, if you're talking, you need to unmute. I move we accept the minutes of February, was it 24th? Um, 12th. February 12th. There a second? Andy is muted, but he's raising his hand. So Andy K. Um, any discussion? They seem great to me. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Raise your hand. Yep. Unanimous. One, two, three, four, five. Mary, Mary, this is the, this is where it's a pain in the neck when the town administrator comes on. Um, okay. For any remote meeting, you have to do a roll call vote. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. If, even if it's unanimous? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Every vote. Yeah. Well, thank you. It is a pain. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Andy Kay? Aye. Adam Virgo? Aye. Andy MF? Yes. Risa? Yes. Denise? Aye. Myself, Mary? Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Any abstain? The votes carry unanimous. All right. Next on the agenda. Um, Actually, Mark is on. I had to abstain because I didn't join in time. Yeah, same here. Okay. Sorry. We, we have such a full meeting we started and we figured the minutes were safe to start with. So we've got Ray Michikowski and Mark Dunn to complete our, our committee who can be here tonight. So that's great. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm good. I'm glad. I didn't want to start the Phelps Farm until you were on. So that's great. So we have our application for the Phelps Farm. Um, and we appreciate the Karen and, and Susan is on and Alicia um, is Susan Lisk and Alicia Betancourt and um Karen um Sanchez Epler is on and welcome all of you. Um <clears throat> so we have should we do a motion first or can we start discussing first, Town Administrator? <laughs> Oops, you're still muted. Okay. Yeah, you use that that's your whole purpose is discuss it is once you make the motion. Right. You you always give an opportunity. You know how to do that. Yeah, yeah. but you have, this is your whole purpose is to discuss it. Yeah. So would someone like to make a motion regarding the Phelps Farm? I move that we approve the application for Phelps Farm. I'll second. All right. Any discussion? Are we actually approving it or we're recommending it to town meeting? We're recommending it to town yeah. meeting. So, okay. I, you know, we've, we've used the word approve in the past, but I think recommended is, is a better, because um, that is what we're doing. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'm happy to modify my motion to well, say recommend to the you. town meeting uh, that they are... How do we say that then to present it to the? I think it's safe to say that we we when we recommend them, with they have met the requirements for a, a CPC um, um, requirements for a CPC application. I mean, that's one way of saying that. that yes, we we've, we've done diligence and feel that it, it's um, worthy of the town's consideration that they've met all the requirements for the application. Uh, and and can support it, but that's, uh, at the, after that, it's up to the town to vote yay or nay. I, Everything I, that I, Andy said, I make that motion. Another simpler way is just to say we recommend approval 
of the All right. application is presented by the Porter Phelps Huntington House um, for the Phelps Farm. Um, but let's discuss because we may have other things we want to amend it by too. Um, discussions? Andy Morris Friedman? Yeah, were there any changes to the application from our last meeting that I didn't notice when I reread it? I did. I sent the same one, so it was it was the same application. Okay, and uh, could you do me a favor and read the the short description? Yes. Or or put it up on the screen or whatever. And I think the short description, I think the long description goes right along with the application. So it's. It's just nice to hear it. Um, one sentence summary. In 2022, the 1816 house at Phelps Farm was donated to the Porter Phelps Huntington Foundation. A grant enabled a con a conditions assessment and stabilization plan, and now PPH is requesting CPA funds to implement those plans. Work has begun, estimated completion date is June 2025, and it's to stabilize stabilization of the 1816 farmhouse at Phelps Farm, 113 River Drive, Hadley, Mass. Thank you, Andy, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, well, I have a little comment, unless somebody else wants to go first. Go ahead. Uh, I think this is a fabulous proposal. Uh, I can't think of a better use for CPA funds. Um, uh, I'd like to offer my help in preparing the presentation for town meeting. So please give me a call. Um, and I hope that this is just the first in a long series of um, cooperative efforts between your foundation and the CPA committee and the town of Hadley to make what's really going to be the um, historical focal point of uh, our part of the valley of, uh, into the future. Thank you, we would love that help. There will be a, well, I should ask other comments. Um, well, there will be a grant agreement because you're not a town owned um, building and um, that will prepare very quickly and get it to the town attorney. Um, but that won't be done until it's approved at town meeting because that then we'll be sure it's needed. Um, and then as I had explained before, the funds aren't available until July 1st because they're the, we're voting on fiscal year 2025, um, which starts July 1st, 2024. One, two, two um, considerations of the grant agreement that are sometimes used and sometimes not are one, um, a preservation restriction, which I understand that that's in your next step that you have um, plans to apply for a grant that would include putting that in place. So I'm comfortable as long as the rest of the committee is with not requiring that at this time. And I think the Porter Phelps Huntington Foundation is certainly um, known in town and, and you know, respected. Um, the other thing that's sometimes required is, you know, if you were to sell the building um, within a certain period of time, you know, the, these funds, the town funds are being used to um, improve the building and, and improve the value um, of having a, a payback period. And um, I think I think that that helps get it through town meeting. I think that, you know, it, it's especially without the, you know, by the preservation, historical preservation restriction is a benefit to the town as well. And we're not asking for that. Um, so I, I would like the committee to consider, you know, 10 years um, we tried five last time and people were, that was, and it was a different situation with the church. It was a private business. It was not for, this is certainly the public's going to be invited inside. And um, 
but I was I I think proposing ten years is is um, something I I would like to to see. But I you know I want to see what other people in the committee think as well. It's certainly um, it's certainly everybody's input. I have a a question, Mary, or, or anyone else. When we ask for that period of time, and I know for the church it ended up through town meeting, am I right? It was 20 years? That, no, the church doesn't. I don't, I'd have to look back. I'm not sure. I think they did have a. Yeah, I, I think, I think they, they did push correct. it back to 20. Okay. I think you're correct. Push it back to 20. So my. Oh, I'm my, sorry. The V1 vodka place is 20. Sorry. Wrong yeah. Point. So my question is, is that prorated at all for length of time? Or is it exactly dollar for dollar? Like if if Porter Phelps sold the building, which I'm sure they won't do, but if they did, in 20 years, they'd have to give back every penny of the money? Or is it somehow prorated? As, it, as that grant agreement was written, and let me just say, Paul Kozov has backed out. At, no, he said it's on hold. He's not that. That's he's not sure that that's something he can live with. I think twenty years is way too long, mm -hmm. um, which is why I think if we're a little proactive with ten, maybe that won't be. Um, but um, it, as it's written, it's dollar for dollar. However, in ten years the money won't be worth what it is today. Right. So, you know, it's not it's not being altered for inflation or altered for anything. Um, and, you know, if you end up selling the building, in some ways it was an interest-free loan from the town, which isn't the intent and it wasn't, you know. Um, I think, um, and, and we don't have to do anything. It's just, it is not a town-owned building. So it's um, it's some protection for the town. Um, I think ideally five years is makes a lot of sense. Um, but I'm, I don't want a long, I don't want somebody to stand up and say 20 years again, either. I, I don't know. Um, well, given the scope of this project, uh, five years seems like an aggressive timetable anyway, mm -hmm. uh, to get to a completion point where it might be ready to part with. So I don't know if the group would be willing to easily say 10 years, not a problem. And that might be a, a bigger selling point that way you do get ahead of the 20 year push. Uh, and at the same time, you, you know, you correctly pointed out that money today will be worth a fraction of what it is uh, in, in even 10 years. So uh, and then getting the prorating uh, starts getting messy uh, and the present value of money, et cetera. So it just seems clean to have 100 uh, percent payback if you sell it before 10 years of the date of issuance. I agree. I think 10 years is a good uh, good starting mm -hmm. point. Do you like the idea of any payback period? Do you think that's important, Denise? I I don't know. I'm now just hearing for the first time that Mr. Kozo has pulled out, or potentially. Um, I feel like putting that in there, the five year ask, like sort of planted that seed, um, and it. The reason it became twenty years is because it was in there at all. Um, so I don't know. I'm just. I also don't think that the Porter Phelps Huntington House is going to sell it in 20 years anyway. Uh, but maybe we can ask them that. Would like <laughs> would that be a deal breaker if it went to 20? I don't, I mean, it, we are hoping where the museum is, a, is celebrating its 75th anniversary and so has hopes to continue for um, decades and decades to come and to do this work towards that. So I don't think that we would be afraid of that or pull out because of it, but I would much prefer to talk about a 10-year horizon um, because a 20-year horizon will not be me who's dealing with it. Um, you know, I think one thing to think about, though, is if Paul, if Paul's was 20, the V1 vodka was built 20, and then we make this 20, I think we've really set a precedent for any other non-town-owned building and I think 20 is way too long. I right. think that that's not in 20 years. A lot of the work you're doing is <laughs> may need to be, we'll done be needing again. to be redone. So and, yes, that's what I'm saying is I think 
I would feel more comfortable in 10 years, yeah. but I, I but I don't think we would pull out if you in, if the town raised it to 20. And the other thing is not to have it in there and all because it is the Porter Phelps Huntington Foundation, um, which is not a town owned entity, but it is an entity that the, the you know, the other thing is, though, they're going to come back and ask potentially for more and more and more and um that gets messy too, I guess, if every time we say 10 years, it, it stretches it out. But, I, you know, we, I'm, I'm not sure. I, it's, um, it's also, it's the town's money. So it's protecting the town if things don't go as planned. Um, the town hasn't put this money into a building that then benefits somebody, not the town. Um, Right, because we wouldn't want to put a new roof on a building and then tear it down in Hadley. We wouldn't want to do that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. well, there was uh, certainly some changing priorities back then, Andy. Thank yeah, you for the sarcasm. The, 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 state, the state messed that whole time. Uh, yes. I like 10 years. I think that's fair. I think it shows that we're doing due diligence, but it's not as onerous as 20 years. I mean, in 20 years... I mean, I don't think we'll, well, we could have flying cars, you know, who knows? <laughs> it can be a whole different world. But I like Denise's point about whether this should be in the warrant article or this should be in the agreement. I think that's a good point. Oh, okay. So that I didn't, I didn't pick that up, Denise. Yeah. No, I mean, Andy is saying it better. I, yeah, I feel like having it read on the floor is problematic. So I was, I'm kind of feeling like not to have it at all. But if we could put it in the agreement and not read it aloud, I would be game for 10. And then if someone asks on the floor, we can say, yes, we have voted right. for, the, for the agreement to carry 10 years. Mm -hmm. Or whatever. Can we, I ask a question? What, what if... Um, it only went to another educational organization if it had to be sold by PPH because we couldn't afford it any longer. What's that? If it went to, an edu to another a educational organization like PPH because that's our that's who we are. Yes, the, the, that's a very good question and certainly above my pay grade. You know, that's something the attorneys have to work out. But you could definitely make the argument that you shouldn't have to repay it if it's not so if it's so one nonprofit to another or if there's a loss or I, I, you know, I don't know. Who's gonna remember in twenty years anyway? Ten years. <clears throat> Ten years, yes. Ten years. Well I'll be I'll be eighty five. <laughs> you know, if if we aren't reading it on town floor, I would advocate for five years. Yes. I would I would advocate for five years because I think that that's that's more reasonable. Um, and you know, we can put it in our motion um, that the grant agreement will include the five years, and then um, just say there'll be a grant grant agreement in the warrant. Um, that sounds good to me. I'm going to dissent here. I would think that uh, just like 20 seems a little too long, five seems a little too short. And given the nature of the organization here, I think that um, you know, 10 years seems to be uh, like uh, Goldilocks here. This seems to be about the right spot. Well, if we're, if we're going to write spots, I'd split the difference and go for seven. It's kind of a magical number. This is kind of inside baseball. Maybe the grant agreement subcommittee should work this out. Um, I think let's decide tonight. I just, okay. <laughs> um, all right. What if we come back in five years and renegotiate also? Let's decide tonight. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I think I'd mostly just want to say that we're not concerned about having this payback restriction. So you should set whatever seems the best thing for your policy. I'm not pushing hard for one of these numbers. I agree. I agree. I think it should, 
I think I think we should just call it 10 years and move forward. They're going to be coming. You guys are going to be coming back for additional funding. This is just the beginning stages of, the, of this. I don't think this is going to be a showstopper with 10 years. And like Mark was saying, well, you know, this 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 is a due diligence on our part. You know, I think we're I think we'll all be doing a, a good job and I'll feel better uh, with a 10 with a 10 year stipulation on this. Ray, your camera's off. It's a little confusing when you start talking. It, are you are you comfortable oh, with your camera on? Or my every time I turn the camera on, my bandwidth goes right down in the toilet, and okay. I okay, I, you can't hear me, and I can't That's hear you. Fine. Luckily, I think I recognize your voice by now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> very good. Um, all right, again, we'll be required. We can start. Um, all right, let me just do that. All right. Um, uh, I have a question, Mary. Yeah. Do those who want the 10-year, I don't know what we're calling it, repay, um, do you want an actual motion or do you just, is it okay to just say that's how we're going to do with the grant agreement and leave it at that? I think if it's in the motion, it's just, there's no question. Um, mm -hmm. which I think is good to do for future non-town projects too, to just have it. Um, okay, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll make a motion that the grant agreement reflect the 10-year payback period. Second. All right, any second? Second. That's Ray. Um, We're just voting on- On the, just uh, the 10-year. On the amendment to the original, yes, motion. Yes, that's how I, that's how I understand it. Yes. Yeah. Are there any other discussion? Um, all those in favor, I'm going to do roll call. Oops. Roll call. Yeah. Andy Klepacki. Yes. Risa. Yes. Andy Morris Friedman. Yes. Denise. Yes. Mark. Yes. Adam. Yes. Ray? Yes. Mary is yes. All right, that passes unanimously. All right, any other discussion on the original motion made by Risa? All right, all those in favor? Andy Klepacki? Yes. Risa? Yes. Andy Morris Friedman? Yes. Denise? Yes. Mark? Yes. Adam? Yes. Ray? Yes. Mary is yes. All right. Thank you very much to the um, Porterfield. Thank you very much. Yeah. And really look forward to working with you and getting this ready to bring to town meeting. That's great. And um, and Carolyn is the one that'll be okaying the bills when <laughs> you have bills ready to send in. So I'm glad you met as well. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you're welcome to stay. You're welcome to leave. Um, we'll can, oh, I, you know what? I will show um, just because I think it's easier to do it each time. Let me share the screen. And I have to hit the right one. Here it is. Here is um, a proposed draft article, um, Phelps Farmhouse, to see if the town will vote to transfer 50000 from the Community Preservation Act Historic Reserve and 100,000 from the Community Preservation Act undesignated fund for a total of 150,000 to the Porter Phelps Huntington Foundation to help stabilize the Phelps Farm at 113 River Drive, including roof and structural reinforcement work. Work is to follow the Secretary of the Standard Interior Standards of Rehabilitation. I don't know if that needs to be in there because it'll be in the grant agreement. Um, a grant agreement from the select board will be required before work can start. Said funds are to be expended under the direction of the town administrator within three years of the date of town meeting approval. Any unspent funds will automatically be returned to the foregoing Community Preservation Act fund by that date. Does that sound good to the CPA committee, CPC? I don't know if we have to have the Secretary of Interior Standards in there since it will be in the grant agreement, just like the 10 We don't. Yeah, why don't we take that out just because things get wordy. Okay. 
So that's that goes to legal and they can change, they often do change something. So that's a start. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, that concludes that part for um, Porter Phelps. Next up, we have a, a late um, application, but it's for our beloved town hall. And, <laughs> and um, so everyone's okay with talking about it. Um, it'd be nice to discuss and, and hopefully vote on it as well. Um, we have Scott McCarthy. McCarthy here from DPW as well as Carolyn Brennan. So, um, Scott, if you'd like to tell us. Well, I'll be happy to open discussion by making a motion to recommend the uh, for approval the application as submitted. Is there uh, a second? A second. Okay, Andy K. And that would open us then up for discussion. Very good. Um, Scott, would you like to do a quick kind of presentation to the CPC for um, what your application is for? Yes, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we uh, we came to you, to, uh, you for some funding to try to uh, restore and preserve the town hall uh, with some exterior work, uh, windows, uh, siding, and some cement work uh, in the rear of the building. Uh, it's starting to uh, really show its age, and uh, we'd like to uh, get some architectural work done so we can, uh, you know, potentially go out to bid and uh, make some repairs. Uh, th this is not a study e either. I wanted to throw that out there. We're looking to actually, you know, get some funding together and make some repairs. We, we know it has to be done, but we just need it drawn up by an architect so we have a real uh, document to go out to bid with. So uh, they would, so they would work with you on a design, generate a budget, and then if the scope exceeded the budget you think the town could afford, then you would have you would um, you know work with them on the scope, come up with a final package. Correct. Okay. Yeah, we we tried getting some uh, contractors to come out and just look at the project to give us some kind of ballpark information and uh no one will come out even to look at it without something drawn up by an architect yeah yeah what what do you call so what exactly is it a scope of work you're looking for is it um a it sounds like a, a construction design you know, design and construction budget right kind of for uh, building envelope repair? Yes, that, that's it. Uh, design and construction budget for uh, the exterior preservation uh, of the building. If I can also add, it's also, I think our biggest concern as well is the cement steps. Uh, if it, there, are, I, I don't know, did the pictures come through, Mary? Oh, let me look. Thank you. You'll see where um, I think the integrity of those steps are in dire need of. That's where we really focus, where we really need a, someone with some expertise to come in and tell us where we're at with those, the front steps and the side steps and the ramp. And we've lost a few windows with the windstorm, a few storm windows. Mm -hmm. There's a picture of that as well. Most of our windows are sealed shut by cock, cocking. I've I've got them. They're so large <laughs> that yeah. I can only see a little bit of it. Um, let's see. I wonder if I can. Well, we've certainly while you're opening those pictures, we've certainly been down this road before with town halls a long time ago. That and some of us remember the uh, uh, emotional discussions about using modern materials over the uh, original. So I'm wondering, in this scope with the architect, will there be some review of trying to keep the uh, exterior as historical as possible, maybe uh, perhaps with modern material. Um, and also, uh, I know there were some side discussions about reviewing the uh, original pictures of how Town Hall was prior to some of the modifications, whether or not there's going to be any um, attention paid to uh, those original features, like the full height windows and uh, casings and <clears throat> 
Yes, Andy, the uh, answer to that would be yes. We, we'd like to keep the building as historically correct as mm -hmm. possible using modern mm -hmm. materials, uh, whatever kind of siding that may be, or, you know, uh, correct replacement windows that are operational and, you know, weather tight, et cetera. Uh, uh, it, it is, I did a little research in it, you know, with uh, the help of the uh, historical commission and it, it, the building does have to, uh, it is a registered building. So it has to uh, meet the uh, criteria of keeping it somewhat the same. It needs to do that for CPA funds anyways. Um, all right, I've got two pictures. I have a lot of them, but I thought those were too prominent. They they tell a lot. Okay, so the first one of the steps, let me get back to that. I have a question that I feel if it's not going to be asked on the floor, it, I expect somebody will. Um, is there not a town reserve fund for this kind of work? Um, you know, I've... I'm not trying to be argumentative. I'm just asking the question. There's there's no money. Uh, the only reserve fund that the town has is for operational expenses or emergency expenses. And that this year, I think it was about a hundred thousand. And okay. next year, because of the budget, it'll be down to sixty thousand. That's for emergencies when something a heating system goes or whatever. Um, anything else uh we would have to go through either borrowing but mm -hmm. we have to stay with under, under the tax levy so something like this once we get the results back uh i think it will be more than what the town could afford at this point can everyone see the steps yeah maybe and let me do the other one for the those are the steps near the ramp? Yes. The, those are the steps that go down to the south toward the toward the Congo church? Yes. Yeah, okay. and then yes, and then towards the back. Right. Where the ramp goes. Right. Right. And then right. the other one. Yeah. yeah. Um, So it's most of the building looks like that. Mm. And most of many of those windows are separated, like there's a breeze going through most of the offices uh, and they have not been washed or cleaned in many, many years. Uh, they're, they're really, they're, they are not repairable. Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, but all the discussions we've had, these aren't windows that can be repaired. No, they're not. Uh, most of the ceiling shut reasons are to keep the weather out and uh, insects, etc. There's some, you know, uh, problems with seal with the ceiling between the windows and the uh, structure. So most of them are uh, somewhat sealed permanently shut just to keep the uh, weather out of the building. And we did lose a storm window. Uh was it Friday, Scott, that came down onto the porch from the rec office? Yeah, thurs Thursday it's night, on the Friday. Right yeah. yeah, I had there was a picture, but I don't know if that came through, Mary. Oh, did you send me? I just had two from you. Did you send more? Let me try again. Did you want to see more? I mean, I can, we I can, have a. Uh, I don't remember. Does someone remember when the last time the exterior was painted? I, I do. It was for the 2009 celebration, the, two, the 350th of the town. It was shortly before that. Wow. 15 years. Yeah. And so the other thing is these columns are going to be done this spring. It's going to be a stark contrast mm. between the rest of the building and the brand new columbs. No, oh, it's... Or restored was, columns. Restored when was the scrape and paint done? Was that just 2009? I, I, I got a feeling there wasn't there a, a full scrape but prior to that. And the 2009 was a touch up. That could be Andy, because it was debated for years whether to paint or 
put vinyl siding on and then it finally right. got I think a lot of work got done and then wasn't there something about the north side because of all the abuse it gets off of Route 9 or yes. I can't remember one of the reasons Hadley passed CPA was to uh, fund the painting project I was, I was, that was my next question. Was is there a uh, was CPA funds used the last time this thing was that that this thing this this uh, this building was uh, painted? Let me look real quick. Um, I don't know if it was the last time, but I I know it was one of the times. There has been funds used to yeah. There has been yeah, for the exterior. I know I know the columns. The project's going on for the columns, but I think in the beginning years. Um, but all towns in general weren't that things were CPA funds were used for things that maybe don't qualify today, like just some of the normal maintenance stuff. Um, I mean, just painting isn't something that's supposed to be. That's re, that's normal budget stuff. Right. But well, I'm just I, I'm curious why. I mean, is, is there. A, well, we already heard the answer. I mean, it doesn't sound like there's a maintenance budget to take care of these buildings. Well, it's it's. Because, you know, if you start repairing windows and repairing siding, you kind of have to paint. Mm -hmm. um, you nope, know, that's understand. when it's okay for painting. Mm -hmm. But um, let me just look here. I, I don't know if it's an issue for this particular proposal, um, mm -hmm. but um, it's always tricky with CPA when you're talking about replacing, mm -hmm. <clears throat> replacing windows. Um, Remember, there was a question about the doors, the town hall. Mm. Um, some people wanted the doors repaired, the original doors. Other people wanted the doors replaced. And whether the CPA grant could be used to replace the doors, I believe we decided it couldn't be. And uh, new doors were put on. Um, so that's something we'll have to think about in the future. Yeah. But for this particular project, uh, I don't think that's an that's an issue. This, you know, this is a like a report or a plan or something like that. I just went to the CPC website page on the town and looked at our list of projects. And on the annual town meeting, May fourth, two thousand and six, so eighteen years ago, renovate and paint town hall one hundred fifty thousand. So that was and that was renovate. It wasn't just paint; it was renovate and paint town hall. And then another ten thousand the next year, so it needed a little bit more to finish it up. Um, and then let me see if it's listed again. No, it's not listed again before. That's that's the work that must have been with the three fiftieth coming up. Yeah, because there was a push to get the church done, the town hall done, and a whole lot of other things done, looking really good. So, um, so yes. At that time, it was one hundred fifty thousand, but it wasn't concrete steps or windows. I'm sure, you know, I don't think. Um, can, I just, can I just say, with modern paint, I mean, you have to paint more often, and it's critical um, with PPH. I mean, we're painting every twelve years now, and it's it's expensive, but the scraping and the painting are critical. It's the preservation of the historic structure that you have that we have here in Hadley. So I remember all of this very clearly because <laughs> I've been here for quite some time and I was very focused on what was happening with town hall at the time. So thank you, Susan. I, yeah, I just I just hope we can retain its historical uh character. I, I think I think we can with the right person helping us. I don't think that's going to be an issue. And I, and I think uh, what you, you touched on about using modern materials to help us do that, I think long term, we're going to have some pretty good uh, goals that something that holds paint a little better than, you know, standard, you know, clapboard, etc. They have so many different building materials now that, you know, we may be able to do something to, you know, preserve it much better and longer. Any other discussion? No, so I guess my question is is this is this is for I, I know Scott, you said it wasn't a study, but it kind of <laughs> it sounds like it kind of is it's just to 
figure out which way we go here, which, you know, what, what, what needs to be done with the town hall and, um, and is, is it, what is there going to be like a request for proposals for, from our, our architecture firms? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's okay. a request for qualifications. So it it really, it, they're, we're asking them specifically what we want them to do. We're not asking them to, to kind of do a study and, what, and then have them tell us what we want. We're looking for the siding or painting windows and uh, the cement, you know, the cement steps. So it will be a very clear, specific scope of work that that's how we'll measure the qualifications along as, as, as well as examples of other town uh, town halls and town buildings. So I, I think there's a lot out there. I, I was looking into it. I know Scott has too. There's so much out there to preserve so much better, even just within the last 10 years of quality products that make that, that still keep the, the architectural and the historical significance of the building that would, I, I think would lend the long run be a significant savings and will um, keep that building, you know, weather strong. If that's the right term. Andy, I did want to say <clears throat> I certainly support the aspect of going out and getting a an architect to provide a design for this or a set of specifications, so that um, you know perhaps in other projects in the past you get the okay to go ahead and put it together, and then people go out there and try to put it out to bid, but the but the contractors themselves want full specs. Um, if you try to get it on the back of a napkin, you wind up uh, you know not having the full specs, or when you finally do get the full scope of the project. Uh, the budget is all, is very different than what your original estimate was. So people come back and have to reapply. We've seen that here in this group, let alone other projects in town. So I think it's good to get the design done uh, properly up front, so we can go out to the contractors knowing with confidence exactly what we're after, and get and good good qualified bids from which we can make a decision and get this project going a lot faster than losing these uh, these uh, voting cycles. Thank you. Yeah. So it sounds to me like what you're asking for is a, you know, a d design services, you know, to, to fund design services to evaluate, come up with a design a cost estimate, and then give you construction bid documents. So, you know, this would bring you up to going out to bid, at which point you would then ask the town or whatever to fund the construction costs. That um, is, that is correct. Yeah. And, and like I, I said to you, I, I tried reaching out to some qualified contractors that do this kind of work, and uh, they wouldn't even come out to take a look to yeah. see what it is. They said, if you don't have some kind right. of spec or design in hand, we're not it, interested in looking right. at it. There's too many, too many variables, too many right. questions. It, it needs to be properly uh, laid out. Right. And if they're going to come out and invest their time and give you all the specs and then you got to go out to bid, I mean, you know, you can see that it's not something that people are going to jump at and put their full attention to. Yeah. Risa? Yeah. I, um, I have a question more about um, the committee's, uh, our mandate, our policy procedure, et cetera, et cetera. Um, clearly, this work needs to be done from what I can see. But... I'm a little concerned. Are we, is there a precedent for taking a late application? Because I, I understood it had to be in by February 1st. Is there, are we going to be opening the door for lots of late applications in the future if we set a precedence by taking this one? Or is that something we just do? I, I think precedent-wise, we've taken lots of late applications. Oh, okay. Um, but, at, you know, at the beginning, I said, if the committee is agreeable, let's talk about this. So I, it was my decision, I think, to even approach the committee with it as chair. But then I think if somebody, you know, if the majority of people felt it wasn't appropriate, then we we would say you have to wait. But oh, okay. it's, um, and I know Carolyn, part of the reason I said yes is I know Carolyn has talked about this. I knew she was trying to get something and I checked with her before February 1st and she said, we just haven't been able to get people to give us figures. So they kind of thought, well, maybe this has to be the first step. And it certainly makes it much easier or... Easier isn't quite the right term. It makes it much more comfortable for us to, if they come back to the CPC and ask in the future for funds to do some of this work at town hall, it's much more comfortable for us to feel like 
they really have figures that can get the job done. Um, so I think it's I think it's more and more we're seeing some kind of funds put out first, and then then we know what we're even talking about, um, and they know what they're talking about. Um, Thank so you. That's a good question, Risa. I mean, that's mm -hmm. well, I'm new, so I just went. To yeah, Andy Morris Friedman. I saw you had some comments on that. Um, yeah, the CPA doesn't work on precedent. Every application is unique. And just because we did something last time doesn't mean we have to do it this time. Or just because we didn't do it, that doesn't mean we can't do it. Um, and on top of that, I think uh, town governments and departments should be given as much leeway as possible and as much cooperation as we can, as we can manage. So you worked like uh, heck to get the proposal in before tonight's meeting. And if it's okay with Mary, it's okay with me. With that, then. Any other thoughts or discussion on this? We have a motion before us um, to accept their application for to prepare a design and construction budget for rehabilitation and restoration work on the exterior of Hadley's Town Hall. All those in favor, um, I'll do a roll call. Andy Klepacki? Yes. Risa? Yes. Andy Morris Friedman? Yes. Denise? Yes. Ray? Yes, and I'm very excited I have bandwidth. I was going to say, it's nice to see you. <laughs> this is only a test. <laughs> Adam? Yes. Mark? Uh, I was going to say yes. I just wanted you to repeat what's the dollar amount? Was it 50? Oh, I'm sorry. $40,000. Thank you. 40. Okay. You're so good yeah. at Yeah. Yes. 40000 And Mary? Yes. So that's unanimous. Thank you. And I'll show you the draft article. Um, you do this just to um, town hall. I don't know if architect package is the right, maybe just say town hall. Town hall exterior, I think, is better. Um, that's perfect. To see if the town will vote to transfer 40000 from the Community Preservation on Designated Fund to the Hadley Select Board to hire an architect to prepare a design and construction budget for rehabilitation and restoration work on the exterior of Hadley's Town Hall, said funds to be expended under the direction of the DPW director within three years of the date of town meeting approval. Any unspent funds will automatically be returned to the foregoing Community Preservation Act fund by that date. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. Again, the town would that uh, would that going with the town would that have a standard grant agreement and say it has to be done to the secretary of state you know, standards? It's that's that's a question. To my mind, we haven't had a grant agreement for any town owned projects. It's been for outside. However, CPA funds. If you use CPA funds, you need to use the Secretary, um, U.S. Secretary of Interior standards. So and we have to, for procurement purposes, we have to. That's that's Chapter 30B, 140. We have to. Okay. Yep. Um, good. All right. Well, we voted on it, and we've got the article wording. So, again, Scott, thank you. And Carolyn, thank you very much. Very thank you. Thank Please. you so much. Joyce Changalo is going to be very happy. <laughs> you wanted this. Well, that's what counts. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. All right. Um, so we have our the um extensions, and I'll just quick do this again. Um would someone like to make a motion to vote on the extension for the two projects for town, the, the First Congregational Church? And actually, I'm going to turn this part back over to Andy. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, do we want to do one vote for both extensions? I would move to do that. And who's the second? Second. They both go hand in hand. Okay, 
All in favor of uh, one vote for both extensions? You have to do the roll call. Oh, I don't have the yeah. list. Okay, I'll just go down. Uh, Use your so, gallery view. Yeah. Yes. So, Mary, you're out of it. Um, uh, Adam? Oh, no. Wait, there's somebody below you. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, no. No, there isn't. Okay. I was, I was going to say yes. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Denise? Yes. Mark? Yes. Risa? Yes. Ray? Yes, sir. Uh, Andy K? Yes. And myself, yes. And Mary's uh, abstaining. I'm abstaining, right. So what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Should be seven. Okay. Did you get everyone? Seven and one. Uh, seven, seven, zero, and one. Yeah. Okay. So all in favor of, uh, oh, any discussion? On the extensions? We already voted. <laughs> no, well, no, we voted We voted to do one vote for both. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the same number of votes, I just realized, but <laughs> any, uh, any discussion on the extensions? Okay, hearing none, I just want to say that uh, um, as the chair, Mary decided that extensions should be more than one year since one year isn't enough and everybody's got to come back for another extension. So that's why uh, two years was chosen. I'm not sure you have a motion for this yet. I'm going to ask for one right now. Okay. I would still <clears throat> move. Okay, any second on the two years extensions for both projects? Somebody's got a second. 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 Okay, Let, let's vote. Uh, Adam? Yes. Okay, Denise? Yes. Mark? Yes. Riza? Yes. Ray? Yes. Andy K? Yes. Andy MF? Yes. And Mary is abstaining again. All right. Uh, the motion passes, and I hand it back to Mary. Thank you. The only other... Um Warren article that we have is to um, put in 50,000 as we discussed last time for the the budgets um, into the buckets for the fiscal year 25. So another 50,000, 10% of what we expect to open space, historic preservation reserve and housing resources reserve. And then appropriate the sum of 10,200 from the community preservation fund um, to be provided 5,000 for our usual potential expenses, and 5200 for administrative payroll um, for Kayla. And that's, you know, it's not up to us to decide what she's paid, but at least there'll be some funds there. And I did go up 4%. I again, I don't know what the town will do, but I put in an extra 4% over what it was for last year. Um, so that's, and the 5000 I know we spend seventeen fifty for the coalition dues. Um, and then if we do need an ad, that's a couple hundred. If we, part of the reason it's higher is if we should need to hire an attorney to look into something like we did, um, like the grant agreement, there's a little bit of cost. If we have some specific questions, it's nice to have some extra funds. Whatever isn't spent of this goes right back into the CPA undesignated fund at the end of the year. It's not something that it just it's only there for a year and whatever isn't spent goes away, but we can't spend more than this. Um, so that's we already voted on the 50,000, but I just wanted you to see the wording. So I guess we should vote on the 10,200. I, I talked with the town accountant and she said it'd be better to have it in two separate um, expenses, but instead of like listing it in Separately, I put the 10,200 and then showed how it would be divided. And again, the attorney, town attorney may change this, but um, how does that sound to people? Sounds good. We uh, actually, I'll make, go ahead. I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, amend the Warren article that we passed last meeting to what is written here. Um, I think we just voted on the 50,000. We did not vote on the 10,200. I see. So what we need now, it, it still goes under one article, but what we need now is a vote for the 10,200. Uh, okay, then I move that we do that. 
I will second it. Any other discussion? That's it. There's no, there was nothing for the cemetery committee. No extensions or anything. They they weren't due for one. Okay. They already got it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The only other extension that was up, as we discussed, was the um, Goodwin, and we voted when the when their time runs out to take the money back. Um, and that's what under you know that was what Carolyn Brennan said was really the town's position. Mm. Um, they need to they need to come up with a plan and that won't help them. Um, all right, any other discussion? All those in favor? Um, I'm going to stop sharing so I can see everybody. Okay, um, Andy, for a vote. Hi. Um, Risa? Yes. Andy Morris Friedman? Yes. Denise? Yes. Ray? Yes. Adam? Yep. Mark? Yes. Mary is yes. Okay, unanimous. Thank you. Um, and I don't think I need to show the treasurer's report again. Um, the only funds spent. Since our last meeting was that seventy five thousand for the windows at Golden Court got spent, plus some more of Kayla's um, payroll. So um, the rest are waiting, I think, for spring, so that the fields can continue to be worked on and the town columns can continue to be worked on, and hopefully the Hockenham fence. We'll see if the town works that out. Um, so we didn't hire a treasurer last September because we didn't have anyone wanting to take that spot. Um, and um, I, I, Adam said he'd be interested. Um, it's Adam mostly what it is is doing up that treasurer's report, which I'll be more than glad to <laughs> show you what I do. And Kayla's yeah. doing it as well. So it's nice to have another another person to say, can you try to bring it up to date too? And it's it's um, sure. it's getting the figures from the town. The town is. The figures that I sent you don't include any revenue since December 31st because the town is still, I guess, closing out um, the books for that. So there's a there's a lot more in this. You know, the town has collected a whole nother section of um, real estate taxes. So, that, you know, it should be another good bit of money in there, about 80 grand. Um, but it catches up eventually. So, um, yeah, I'll need a, a little help getting started, but I'm sure sure I handle it great um i like I'll, 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 I'll make a motion that uh adam be the new treasurer second okay um we're done any other discussion thank you thank you thank you <laughs> no. um, all those that, oh adam can you just one thing we didn't do last time that I like to do because um, it's just a quick introduction of people, and I'm going to take a minute to do that right now because you're you're new to the committee and you're wondering who we all are, and we're wondering who you are. So um, it's you know just a quick um, intro, and I won't make you go first, but I will go first. Um, I think it's nice to just do a quick round robin, and you know I'm um, I've lived in Hadley since I since 1981 when I married a guy from Hadley and grew up in Amherst. And so I'm very familiar with the area. Um, I love history and um, I, my profession is multifamily housing. Um, and I own quite a bit of open space and forest land and stuff in both in town and, and nearby. So I, I have a little bit of each of those areas. So it's, it's, it's been fun to be on this committee and it's a great committee for doing stuff that will really benefit Hadley that we might not have funds to do or people would approve to do otherwise. Um, so Andy Kay, do you wanna say a few words? I guess I'm a relative newbie here, only coming in the uh, mid nineties um, and uh, got involved in town, uh, uh, helping out with coaching, quickly got involved in park and rec, was uh, in that, uh, that facility for 15 years and been on the Building committee, the um, long range planning committee, the uh, um, finance committee. Now it's my second stint on CPA, 
and I'm a uh, finance committee representative. So I'm glad to serve and be part of something where uh, it's good to be able to help uh, organizations get funding. Thank you. Risa? Yeah, um, I represent housing on community preservation, and I moved to Hadley a little over six years ago. I've served on the sustainability committee for the library and um, uh, Habitat for Humanity and um, uh, Family Selection Committee. And I currently serve on the um, Hadley Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. And I am learning so much about community press. Uh, this will be my, this is my third cycle. So I've been on this committee for a little over a year. Thank you. Andy Morris Friedman. Uh, hi, Adam. Welcome. Uh, I'm Andy Morris Friedman. I am also a uh, Hadley newcomer. I've only lived here 30 years. <laughs> um, uh, so that definitely makes me a newcomer. I'm a former uh, chair of the CPA, a uh, big uh, history buff, and uh, town meeting big mouth. <laughs> Denise? Hi, um, I'm Denise. I live in Hockenham. I've actually never changed my permanent address, so born and raised in Hadley, um, and then bought the house I grew up in, and I'm the historical commission um, person for the CPC. Uh, and I've been on the Historical Commission since 2017, and I've been on the CPA since uh, winter 2020. Great. Kayla, why don't you you're, give, tell us about you? Sure. I'm Kayla. I'm the land use coordinator, so I recently started working for CPC. Um, I've been in Hadley about over a little over a year now, and I've been working for the town for a little under a year. Started as the conservation agent because um, my background's in environmental studies, and now working for CPC, Planning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals, and Conservation Commission. I'm happy to be here. Yay. Happy to have you. We are happy to have you. Yes. Ray? Hey, Adam. Uh, so I'm with, the, I, I represent the uh, Conservation Commission uh, on the CPC. Um, been born and raised in Hadley, um, just like Denise, and uh, and welcome aboard. I mean, I've, I've, I've been on the... Um, conservation for, I don't know, three or four years now, learning a lot there, just got on this board uh, as, as a representative uh, about, I think it was last year. And um, yeah, a lot of fun, a lot of fun, a lot of, lot of interesting things going on. Mark? Oh, excuse me. Um, I bought my first house in Hadley in 1997. Um, I have been working uh, for the last 17 years as an architect in the facilities department at UMass, and I have for the last five years been on the planning board, uh, and it's I'm here because I am the representative from there. Um, I am also the chair of the Hadley Diversity Committee and uh, or Committee for Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. And uh, I'm happy to be here. Okay. Adam, your turn. Hey, everybody. So my name's Adam. My last name is pronounced Bergalt. If you ever need to say it, um, I won't be offended if you get it wrong. Um, I moved to Hadley. I'm, I'm definitely the newest newbie. Um, I moved to Hadley in June of last year. So a little bit, a little bit after Kayla. So I'm definitely the newest, I think. Um, would definitely love to buy a house here uh, someday. Um, I also serve in the bylaw review committee. Um, I work from home. I work in public policy research. I work as a project manager. Uh, which is part of why I volunteered to be the treasurer because that's basically all I do every day is budgets and um, stuff like that. So it's sort of in my wheelhouse. Um, and uh, I am always out on the bike path. I run almost every day of the week. So if you ever see me out there, I was wondering 
uh, Andy, if your background was the was the Norwood But if you ever see me out there running, feel free to say hi. I would love to would love to meet you in person. Great. All right. Thank you, everyone. Listen, we're we're an hour in, so following what people have requested, we'll do a quick five minute break. Please mute yourself <laughs> and turn your camera off if you want. And so 812, we'll be back. Thank we'll you. keep going because we still have a few things to go over. But thank you all. Um, frequently asked questions. Everyone, I, I guess I don't think we need especially a vote, but I'd like to um, stick it on with our CPC website page it, with the, you know, the changes that Chase Mack had made, which corrected some things and explained some things better. So um, as a starting point, we can certainly change it as needed, but thoughts or um, comments on any of it? Well, I, I just want to say Chase is the number two person at the CPA Coalition in Boston, and he kind of runs the office there. I'd just like to say I found it very, very helpful as a newbie. I found it very helpful in, in understanding the whole program. Good. Chase, or Stuart Saginaw from the coalition asked if he could throw this out there as an example of a good FAQ <laughs> section to have um, on the coalition. So he may, you may see it there too. Um, which I thought was flattering. <laughs> Any? I'm glad it's a, a living document to be, uh, yeah, full disclosure, I haven't read through it all yet. So, um, <laughs> but I'm sure it is coming from the pros. It's a great place to start. Of course, we've seen CPA evolve over time. So um, it's updated as necessary. And it's something we can certainly keep adding to and expanding as things change or we our understanding changes. But um, trying to just make it easier for people that are interested in the CPA to feel like they have an understanding of what, what is looking. Adam, did you get a chance to look at it? I'm just curious since you're especially new to the CPC. Yeah, I did read through it. I, I really liked it. I thought it was helpful. Um, uh, like, I think if I had had this resource when I was first looking into the committee, it would have, I mean, I was interested either way, but it would have been really helpful in, in um, learning more about it before I signed up. So. Um. All right. Well, we'll put it on and, and um, I'll send it on to Stuart and said it's, it's gone through the committee. Um, great. All right. Um, next we have, um, Denise has worked on the application and, um, thank you so much, Denise and, and Mark with Mark helping her too. Um, not really. <laughs> she did all the heavy lifting. I just said, looks great. No, you had a lot of great input. I'll contribute to your campaign. <laughs> Um, let me, I don't know if you want me to put it up. Um, sure. All right, let me get to that. I think it's our third application in all these years. So it was about time to, uh, to update it. Um, so who, who would like to, other than saying a huge thank you to Denise, I have a few comments, but Andy Morris Friedman, I know you had a few. Does, do other people have comments as well? Well, I, I sent uh, I sent you and Denise my comments, and it, it's nothing was that important or urgent in terms of changes. You know, I don't know 
I haven't seen it since, so I don't know if you incorporated them or not, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's, it's such a big improvement that um, uh, I'm happy to accept it as it was or is. We've what? had too much discussion on my part. One thought I had is you had suggested, you know, instead of the sending it to the chair who happened, my name's on there now of having it like Hadley CPA um, at gmail.com. And as long as, um, and what, some that, what happens is when somebody sends it to CPA Mary T at gmail.com, then it just automatically gets fed to my personal um, email so that I see it. One thing that would be nice is if somebody submits it, that it automatically goes to the chair, the vice chair, and the um, our our assist our Kayla's position um, staff person for the CPA, because then you know it would go to those because it can't go to every, you know we don't want everything going to everyone, but at least there'd be more than just the chair seeing it. If it's a question that's timely or you know somebody's on vacation or whatever. Um, I mean, that, that's, you know, and then it doesn't need to be changed every time the chair changes either. Um, yeah, the, um, Mary, if I may, you know, the first stint we had, long time ago, we put up a, a um, generic Adley CPA uh, Gmail account. In fact, I have to dig through my notes, but I set this up, I don't know, 10 years ago now. And it was originally designed for people to to act as a distribution list to send it to every member of the um, every member of the committee, but that doesn't you know changes enough, and nobody's really maintaining it. But it might be an opportunity that to serve as a you know at this point as a um, a banner for people to send uh, a, a mailbox for people to send email into, and it could be you know occasionally changed to meet the needs of. Uh, when the chair changes or, you know, just set up the forwarding there to go to the chair, the, the vice chair, uh, and, um, and you know, um, Kayla's role, you know, have, have it set up for auto forwarding then. So at least you don't have to change this document and it represents a, you know, common repository that's going to get to more than one person's private email. Yeah, no, I think that's a good idea. Um uh, yeah, I'll dig up the the uh, that address and then see if I can uh, recover <clears throat> recover it and get it get it going. Because I don't think you know every time someone wants to, um, oh, okay. Hmm. Pretty sure it was have the CPA at gmail dot com at all. Yeah. And this actually says that Hadley CPA chair at gmail.com. And I don't, I don't know what that is actually. Um, oh, I was just taking it from Andy's note over there on the side, but I didn't oh, okay. realize that that email wasn't real. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Cause anytime if this is for anybody, you know, having a question, it'd be, it doesn't need to go to the full committee because we can't all discuss it to accept at a meeting. So it, you know, having it go to, again, I think it'd be good to go to the chair, vice chair and, and staff person um, and then get forwarded if it's appropriate, you know, um, it may just be a quick question and then it gets answered and everybody doesn't need to, be, you know, get the email. Um, often what will happen is that an applicant will send the proposal to Mary and then Mary will send it to me and say, contact the applicant and help them improve the proposal. Um, and then that second attempt, that improved proposal is what's sent out to the whole committee. Uh, so unless you want to see the first draft, um, you know, only the final uh, has to be sent to everybody, but I'd be interested in what the committee thought. Whether you want to see the first draft or, or whatever. I certainly don't need to see the first draft, but I do like the idea that somebody, that more than one person gets it. Yeah. Although I'm not sure what my role is as clerk now that we have Kayla. 
that was the only thing I did was take minutes. <laughs> We can certainly give you something else if you. <laughs> you had to say something. Yeah. <laughs> I'll buy the cake. <laughs> and th there usually is a bit of difference between the first draft and then what is eventually sent out, partly because the application didn't ask for so much that we had to say, we also need this, and can you do this, and can you get this? One suggestion um, someone had that I think actually is um is something to think about is this there's several sections to this um and you know if it, it might be historic preservation it might be then say you know i don't know um they don't they don't need to i don't want somebody i don't want someone to get confused to think that they have to try to fill out every section you know it's like um it, you know, fill out section, but you don't want them to think that's all they have to fill out. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it isn't confusing. Um, you can't say see this or see this or see this or I don't know. I think well, it's, I think it's, maybe it isn't confusing. You, you could add a sentence, um, please fill out all sections that apply to your project. You know, uh, uh, Mary and I had this discussion about who is this forum for? Is it for the applicants so they can learn about CPA? Uh, or is it for us so we can learn about the applicant? Um, the or is it both? You know, if it's for us, maybe we don't need all that detail in the actual application because we already know it. Um, but if it's for the applicant or for both, then, you know, it can certainly be in there. They need to know all this stuff. What, one of the reasons, you know, it, I've been really dissatisfied with our current application is, is people can fill out hardly anything and send it to us. And there's a whole lot of trying to educate them on what's needed, trying to get the information, trying to get, you know, it's, it's, become a multi-step process to even get it to be an application that's ready to go between before the committee. And I think Denise has done a really good, and, and Mark have done a really good job of trying to spell it out there in terms of, you know, there's more to this and here's the, what we're looking for. Um, and, you know, if it's open space, for example, you know, sometimes we don't even get the address, you know, or we don't get the, we putting a map with it, putting, you know, really detailed is, is really helpful. Um, and some of the questions like she has here, which I know Denise used several other cities and towns, you know, looked at theirs as well. Um, you know, it, we had questions on that for one of our last eight PRs and we didn't know the answer. Um, we had to go back and ask the, the landowner so it's, you know, it, it is helpful, I think. I guess, you know, I would suggest um, let's try it. You know, let's let's put this out there as, as the application and then we'll have some applicants probably for the special town meeting and, and you know, we can get feedback from them as well. Um, or if they just feel like it's, if most people are filling out a grant application, I think it's pages and pages and pages. Ours is very simple and it should be. Um, but I think this will at least help get more of the information we need to even start to discuss the project. Um, you know, uh, just to chime in, one of the pieces that I'm sorry, Tony uh, was getting the email straightened out there, but I just certainly wanted to include that we have a um, professional consultant or some form of reference on there in those um, for those projects that we think would require a little bit more. Uh, expertise. You know, I, we hate to uh, lose time, which ultimately is losing money, like in the case of, oh, I don't know, the North, um, the Congregational Church, rather, where, you know, a uh, structural uh, engineer was brought in uh, for the weight and the lean, um, or, you know, some other project that, uh, like in the case of the Porter Phelps, once they have the architect involved, to me, those are important pieces of information to know that we've got that the project has um, folks involved that um, 
are available for reference, whether they, uh, you know, the, the, the group needs it or they need to come and present, but it, it just puts some expertise behind it. So they don't lose time, don't lose money, and we're able to get these things done correctly the first time. Does this, Denise did add at your recommendation, Andy, um, she, professional resources and qualifications. Is that appropriate language for explaining what you're looking for, or is there a better way to say that? That's what I came up with off the cuff before, but uh, if we need to change it, we can. It, um, because it could be a person, it could be a group, or it could be somebody who, um, you know, is fully qualified. Um, can I ask a question about this? Uh, I think this is a great idea. Professional resources and qualifications. Is that resources and qualifications of the applicant or resources and qualifications that are needed for the project? Well, it's certainly a, a, a good spin. I think that the applicant, is, to me, it's just important that they're on the project, whether or not they are something that we deem that are required or that the applicant is bringing forward. This is a place for them to, for, for uh, us to put it down and have a discussion about it. In the case of like the town, uh, um, town hall, they're going out to get a designer to take care of the, the historical aspect of it. That would be a, a, a place to put that. Um, if there wasn't one, we could ask that question, um, you know, who, uh, who is going to be that professional representative, that, that resource that you're going to work with. Um, so maybe we, Maybe we need a parenthesis there that says something like, um, example, architect, comma, town, employee, comma, something like that. Um, architect, engineer, designer. historical preservationist, designer, yeah, something like that. Just so it's clear that we're not asking the applicant what their qualifications are. Great. Good. I think, thank you. I think that's clear. Yeah, I think this is an important point because, you know, we get a lot of applications, you know, in-house estimate. I asked my uncle, <laughs> how much do foundations cost these days? <laughs> you know, that, that really sets us back. Great. Thank oh. you for clarifying. And also I put in the Slack, Chat, I mean, in the uh, chat, rather, um, the Gmail address I was able to recover that is the, uh, and, you know, Mary, we can, if you want to tell me now, or we can talk offline of who you want to have that forward the emails to. Myself, Andy Morris Friedman is vice chair and Kayla conservation at um, whatever it is, Hadley. Okay, I'll just leave myself in there for recovery at this point, okay. too. I won't, I won't forward my, the emails to me, but just leave myself as a recovery entity. Thank you. So um, can you also email Denise, please, with the exact name of that? Or you put it's, it in the chat. But, yeah, um, put it in the chat. So Denise, if you could please change that down at the bottom of the... Oh, all set. All set. And Kayla, if you can change it on the town website. Yep. So should I change it in the contact information part on the side? Um, is that where you want me to change wherever it? Wherever it says my, that's CPA Mary T. Okay. I think it says that somewhere. If it doesn't, that's fine. Um, it may not, but if it does, just so we're consistent. And then let's do a test. <laughs> make sure it works. <laughs> well, let me, let me make that, let me do the changes and then I'll send, I'll send something out to you and, and let me know. Right. Thank you. That's fabulous. All right. Every... Are people in agreement to give the application and um, put it up and, and have it in place for the, the next? Um, I don't think we need an official vote, but just to want people, make sure people are um, okay with it. Thank you, Denise. Yes. Thank you very Thank much. You. It was a great effort and, and so appreciated. I think it'll make it much, much easier for people to understand what we're looking for and us to figure out what we're looking at. <laughs> Good. Um, duties of the of Kayla of our CP 
C staff person. Um, I just, this is my thoughts. Um, and there's, there's a lot of like administrative stuff I've been doing um, that I've been showing Kayla and, and hoping, you know, when she's comfortable, she'll, she'll do, she's dove into whatever I've given her, which I really appreciate. She's working on getting the old files organized and figure out where the holes are and we'll see what we can track down. Um, and she's starting in on the, the website changes, which is nice that, you know, it's, it, those are just another step that needs to be done. Um, and I showed her the letters I send to um, people whose extensions are come or whose time is coming up to see if they need an extension. So, you know, work with you, Kayla, and, and it'd be great to have you take over that. And, um, and then some of the just communication, posting the meetings and, you know, some of that stuff that would be great to have her do. And that way, you know, it's great if she's doing it as well. Whoever's chair, who it's it's just, you know, nice to um, not have those duties. So um, taking that on um, and the minutes is great. And, you know, um, some of the stuff I've been doing, like putting all the pieces together for the meeting, once, you know, it's ready to go, have her send that out or keep it organized would be great too. Um, I think what we're not asking her to do is to um, evaluate projects or, you know, be the, when somebody comes in saying, I have questions on it, on this is to not really be the one giving, you know, comments or, but more saying that, you know, I'll pass this on to the chair or the vice chair. And, and um, so we're, we're not asking her to do our job. <laughs> <laughs> or but render opinions or anything like that, right? Right, right. Um, but she can certainly, you know, parts of the application say you're missing this, then you're missing that perhaps. Um, but um, yeah. How does that sound to people, especially Kayla, how does that sound to you? But how does that sound to other members of the committee as well of, of a start to figure, figure out this relationship? Um, that sounds great to me. And Mary, we'll be in touch. I know we've kind of been slowly just adding to my responsibilities and like working together on things and seeing what works. Um, I also, I do have your flash drives to return to you. Okay. <laughs> um, I uh, I posted a link in the chat um, uh, from the CPA coalition about some news. And there's an interesting article on the new reporting system to the state. Hmm. which should make it easier to report and track uh, approved and completed projects. Well, that's another thing I can have you do. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, that would be um, great. Andy, I just tried to follow that link, by the way, and it's behind an AOL, AOL wall. Oh, is it? Yeah, uh, you're making me nostalgic, by the way, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still in the last century. You can probably, can you copy it and paste? I, I did. Um, I copied and pasted it, and it gave me an AOL sign-in. All right. I will hunt it down. Thank you. Um, Kay Kayla and I, or I had had somebody, um, it was Newton, right? Had, um, one, I think I mentioned that last time. Like Natick or something? Yeah. yeah it was Natick. Um, some, they were just, they just passed the CPA law and so, or bylaw. So they had reached out to me and I talked to them about what it's to the chair and to the staff person. They were both brand new to that position. And, and I mentioned, we just had a brand new staff person. So Kayla and their staff person, um, I believe you communicated and, you know, as you're both figuring out what role this mean, what does this mean? And it's kind of fun to have some counterparts somewhere else in the state that's doing the same thing. Um, so they're much bigger. <laughs> they get $2 million a year, <laughs> but it's still a lot of the same duties. So that's great. Anything else, Kayla? Do you have any questions for us? Um, not right now. I think you've answered a lot of my questions as we've been moving along. Um, one thing I was working on was creating the spreadsheet of the contact information for the committee members. So if you haven't sent me that, um, send me your phone number. I have everybody's email. And I'll send that out next week or whenever I get everybody's. Great. Thank you. Um, 
Andy Morris Friedman has, is on the steering committee um, for the Community Preservation Coalition, and you have some updates for us. Uh, yes. Unfortunately, I just closed it so I could get the. You want me to? Uh, uh, I sent it to you. Do you, do, yeah. do you? You got it. Okay, just just put it up. Okay. Uh, Chase Mack at the coalition put together this little um, uh, update on what's happening with the commission and uh, um, the steering committee. Um, there's been a lot of big changes because the uh, financial umbrella organization for the steering committee has recently changed. Um, and that was a lot of work um, fitting the square pegs into the round holes. Um, but that's going along pretty well. Um, uh, so that's some big news. Um, they, uh, there you go. Yep. Uh, third sector, New England, you know, that's, a. uh, well, I don't know if they're nonprofit, but they work with nonprofits to handle the financial, uh, part of all this stuff. Um, there's now 196 CPA communities, whoops, um, and uh, six, over 16,000 projects statewide. So that's pretty good. 49.5% um, 49, uh, 49 million uh, was the distribution this year, which was way down. Um, and uh, traditionally, the coalition has three employees, but since COVID, they've only had two. Uh, so rather than hiring a new office person, they think they're going to hire a lobbyist. Um, so there's a subcommittee who's interviewing and finding out uh, who would be good to work in the state house to make sure that the uh, funding uh, becomes more consistent. Um, and then uh, you can check out the success stories, uh, which are on the website. I put the coalition website non-AOL directed in the chat. Um, and you should really check it out because a lot of towns are doing some very interesting stuff. Um, and the only Western Mass person on the um, steering committee, and they are looking for new people. So if you can't get enough CPA, the steering committee meets, you know, every other month or something like that on Zoom. So um, one of my personal goals is to expand the CPA's uh, allowed use for um, energy efficiency in municipal buildings. Mm. Um, but there's not too much support for that. <laughs> uh, but we'll see, I'm working on it. We'll see what happens. Uh, if, um, if we could get the CPA for that to be approved use, we could replace the windows in town hall. Um, but we'll have to see, you know, it's a long shot, basically. Thank you, Andy. I didn't realize they had a Facebook page either. Yeah. yeah. I went on and checked that out when I saw this. So that's, that's yeah. kind of nice. Are people getting the um, the email updates and notes from the coalition? You know, I, Everybody's need, getting to, that? I need to give them Adam's email. Um, Risa, are you getting them and Ray? That comes from Stuart Saginaw. Yeah. And yeah. No, I haven't no, seen it. Okay. Ray, you are not? No. I no. think there was one just yesterday. You yeah. know, that's my yeah. mistake because um, that's something. Now, Kayla, is whenever we have new members, that's something we need to do. I'll add that to my checklist, too. Um, send email. Oh, oh, or and you I'll could just. Off. Or you could just email the coalition yourself. Tell them you're a new member and they'll. They'll take care. One less thing for Mary to do. Yeah, yeah, no problem. That's um, yeah. They and you know the other thing we can do is remove the ones that aren't on the committee any longer too. So that um, so Edwin, yeah, and Amy, make sure they keep it up to date. Um, good. Yeah, yeah, they're really great at the coalition. They work really hard. They, they're really knowledgeable. They put things very plainly and clearly, and uh, I'm very impressed. 
And they sure get back to me when I have applications before them with some really good points. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stuart said he remembers the way back. Who was chair? Uh, Joe Fitzgibbons was the first. Yeah. Joe Fitzgibbons and maybe Edwin, two people drove out to Boston to see Stuart to sit down and say, what are we getting into and how does this work? And he said, I, I was so, I felt like I really had to make their trip worthwhile. So I took them out to lunch. <laughs> but um, it was way before email and Zoom and everything else. So, um, uh, memories. <laughs> um, so, why don't you get your guys' input? At usually a town meeting, it's just hear the articles, boom. And um, if people were paying attention, they might have had in the earlier report what the fund balance was. So last fall, I did a much more kind of detailed. Um, it was supposed to be in the spring, but it kind of got skipped over and just wasn't a good point to backtrack to it. So in the fall, I did sort of give the fund balance and a little bit of the projects that are being done and stuff like that and what had been completed. And but I don't, I don't think we need to do that every time. Um, but I, I did want to do more than just hear the articles. So I wasn't sure what you thought would be helpful for people. Um, Maybe a CPA handout at the table yeah. where the warrant articles are. Oh, that's interesting. It may not always be as hot an issue. I think when we had the big school mm -hmm. asks and it was going to go, you know, bleed over into bonding, I think that got people wondering about what the balance was and what that was leaving for future projects. I don't think we have anything big this year. So, yeah, maybe a case by case basis. Hmm. I think it's always helpful to have the, uh, yeah. You know what's what's in process. The, the just the just a few lines of you know uh, recently completed projects or recent or projects that are ongoing and projects that are upcoming. Just a quick little bullet, a few bullets. Or is it helpful handout? So a handout as opposed to a slide up on the screen with a few words. Right, right. That way, people who want to know can read it and find out, mm. and people who don't want to know don't have to sit through it. Okay. Although I gotta say, I think you find a really good balance between, you know, enough information and not enough information, and uh, so I think you do a really good job at that. But thank you. I you know, home sometimes it's good to reference. You know, when you're getting home and you don't absorb it when you first sit down in front of the screen, so we'll refer back to. I know in the past I've often been like, well, what is the balance? We're voting on this much money, but is that most of it? Is it part of it? Is it, you know, it's... Um, if you do a, a handout, you could put a QR code on it to take them to our website. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's your job, your secretary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's a good point to have the the email address of the yeah they have that even if it's not a qr code just to re-emphasize that um all right so i i won't say anything um in terms of at the meeting unless you know it really comes up and um and i think your idea kayla and i can work on a handout and then um just in process completed and you know basically we do some of that in the annual report but he, I think it's helpful when people are actually voting to have that information. Um, good. All right. Thank you. Um, and then one thing I want to say before we look at dates, um, the, the base this year for the CPA funds match from the state was 21%. And if you got the email yesterday, you'll know that they're projecting what the base next year is going to be just 20%, that sales of homes and refinancing are still down, so they think it'll be even less. Um, and maybe not so likely they'll put in more money either. So um, now we were 53, 54% this year because we are we're have all 3%. So we're in the second and third rounds of distribution. So 
you know, I, hopefully we'll still get that at least 50%. So I think our 50,000 is still on track, um, you know, per as 10% for our putting into each of our reserves. So that's, we'll see, we'll see, but. Um, you think we'll clear on the three rounds and how it works and. If they read the FAQs, okay. not <laughs> Everybody's okay, all right. So it, the one percent, two percent town. The first round, every town city city gets the same amount of money or same percentage, and then if you're at three percent, you get a round two and a round three. Um, and this year they all came kind of the round two and three came at once, um, but it's still. Um, and I think smaller towns are more likely to get a higher percentage. It's a lot easier to fund. You know, an extra two hundred thousand and an extra two million if you're, you know, a bigger town. But um, and someone like Boston, their twenty percent would be, you know, twenty million. So it's, um, it it goes. A, it, we, we get we do really well for the size of our town, right. um, and a lot of that's I think because we're at the three percent, and we certainly use it. So well, we hit we hit the sweet spot. We get. Extra because we're a small town and we get extra because we're at 3%. Right. Yeah. So, okay. Um, I think, does anyone have anything else related to all this before we talk about next meeting? Um, um, I don't know if people saw the article in today's <laughs> Gazette about um, Hopkins Academy and their energy retrofitting. Yeah. Um, I don't know if CPA has any role it can play in this particular project, but I just thought I'd give them a call and that see. Was doing can... geothermal? Well, you know, they're trying to decide, hmm. you know, what's best. But, um, you know, if, for example, um, there's a, something at Hopkins that's some architectural detail that they're going to have to destroy to put a pipe through. Maybe CPA money can be used to preserve that particular element. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll get creative and see if we can help them out. So I just thought I'd give them a call. Uh, because pro projects don't have to come from the community to the committee. We can come up with our own projects and reach out to people to, uh, to do them. So if you have a uh, in a preservation idea, um, you can, as a member of the committee, it's not a conflict of interest or anything for you to reach out to people and try to get it started. In fact, it's it's how the committee was supposed to work according to the law. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we have representatives from different town committees on the CPA. I'm still waiting for those pickleball courts. <laughs> the historic. Historic pickleball. Got to reach out to open space and uh, recreation. Right, right, right. <laughs> I have. <laughs> well, pick, pickles are cucumber preservation, so I think they would qualify. <laughs> Remember what happened to the tennis courts out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice area now. Um, all right. I just, I just want to add a note that um, it was maybe a couple town meetings ago that somebody got up and complained about Zaturka Park and about money being spent there. And I just, I, I was just gonna note that on Sunday, I went over there because I, I try and run from there Wednesday, Friday and 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 Sunday because um, I'd like to get the hill climb going up uh, Breckenridge. And I went over there on Sunday and, you know, usually I'm the only car there and it was, it, it was full. There were a lot of young parents with their kids and, or with their dogs. And I was like, oh, there's the park being used. Fantastic. Yeah. Just fantastic. Um, good. So we have fall town meeting. It's easier to set dates now and then it's, on the website for everybody to to know and and be reminded of and applicants to at least know what what it is and um so that's usually in october so we need to meet um mid-september kind of at the latest to have everything work its way through um 
So last year we started at the very end of August with the first one. And, and I really, I kind of like three weeks in between meetings as opposed to just two if they're questions. Um, but I also know August is a time when a lot of people are away. So it's nice not to have it too early. And that's part of the reason to have more time between when we get the applicants in our first meeting is if people are away on vacation, it's not like they're trying to read <laughs> read applications while, you know, while they're back or quickly or, um, but what, you know, I one thing we could do is meet like August 26th and then again on September 16th, which are both Mondays. Um, but I want if, you know, there's some alternatives we can do too if those don't work. But with that, does that seem like a good plan? That works for me. I think it's good. No Monday issues for me. And it's not Labor Day. Yep. Um, and then we can get the warrant articles right into town hall after that. There's always it's a, kind of more of a time crunch for that. So what did you say, the 26th and the... August 26th, and then September 16th. Yeah, 26th but, should be good. Our last kid is going off to college, but I think by Monday they'll be like, go home. <laughs> um, That's the party. <laughs> <laughs> and will these meetings still be on Zoom, or are we going to go back to face-to-face, -to -face or what's the... I think it's through 25, isn't it? 25. The option is. The yeah. So it's the at some point the state may say it's not allowed anymore, but the option is. Um, so what do you guys are you? Fine? We on the planning board find that we get much more attendance and participation when people can do it from the leisure of their own home and not having to travel, or they can do two meetings back to back since they're not having to travel in between. So we find it it's very beneficial to getting more community uh, involved. That's my spiel. I'm, I'm, I prefer it just because it's so easy to put things, share screens and, and also see who wants to talk and stuff like that. Um, but this is my, this is my one form where it's all Zoom. I have one that's completely in person and one that's hybrid. And the hybrid one is the most clunky. Um, and this is this is pretty seamless for having people come and go. Um, so in, unless we're, there's a, a real tangible reason, like if we were to see the maps or something like that, those deer skin maps, or <laughs> those types of things would be cool to see in person. Otherwise, uh, I'm this is fine for... Uh, this venue like you say you can show prints and, and we can have groups of people come in without it being congested mm. yeah yeah i'm in meetings all day long so you know what <laughs> i'm open to whatever it doesn't matter to me i'll, I'll meet meet here or meet in, in in person gets me out of the house and yeah it <laughs> gets me out of the house <laughs> So I think for now, why don't we leave it Zoom? Um, if, you know, seems like there's a reason to not, then we can do it. I I, I am gun shy of the hybrid just because I've tried to participate in some both. I, I, I'm, I just feel that that's a lot to manage um, mm -hmm. and that it's nice not to have it not feel like it's so <clears throat> But let, let me ask you, if we're not meeting till August 26th, should we change the application deadline to the 15th or um, still leave the August 1st? Again, I don't yeah, want someone to be August, on vacation, but it's still one, two, for the days. Three. That's That would mean three weeks before the first meeting. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. Yeah. One thing that, that does often happen is they send it by August 1st and then it's like, wait a minute, we need to help them with this. And yeah, that does yeah. take some time. Which That's like, what I was going to say. It gives you and Andy more time to help them flesh it out. Yeah. Okay. And, very, very silly. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, especially with potential vacation times, it's good to have extra time. Um, 
And then if they need to, if we say you need to talk with the DPW director first, or you're the building inspector first, or you need to get the historical commission to give a recommendation, then that gives them some time before the meeting as well. Um, okay, good. Anything else? Yes, real quick, um, Andy uh, and um, Kayla, you will have gotten a forward request um, the Gmail address that you have to confirm in order to receive the, the forwards. So that once I receive a, a reply from both of you, it will be complete and I'll send out a test. Awesome. Thank you so much, Andy. Uh, I haven't gotten it yet. Oh, wait, here it is. <laughs> and I'll just say it. I think it's on everyone's mind. Thank you, Mary. You're oh. welcome. <laughs> You and thank you, Andy, and thank you, know, thank you all of you. You're all, you know, it, it's a great team. It is a great team, and appreciate everyone's participation and um, great ideas. And you know, these are good projects, and we'll look forward to town meeting. I think it's the first Thursday in May, and um, we'll see. Go forward from there. Um, what am I supposed to do to confirm this email? It's like. Safe. Should be a confirm button on it, right, Kayla? Would uh, I? There's I'm like a ton of making... links. I have to. Oh, please click verify. the link below. Okay, I got it. Just don't give them your credit card number. <laughs> right. Okay, I okay, I got it. I got it. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Would so move. Second. Okay. All those in I, I don't have to roll call this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>